Hello everyone. In our today's lecture, we are going to study the functions of placenta. As in our previous video, we have studied the structure of placenta and how it formed. As you know, the placenta is the intimate connection between the fetus and the mother. Okay, and uh, in human, it is a utero chorionic. In in case of fetus, it is uh, the placenta. In case of human, it is of two parts. The first one is a fetal placenta, and another one is a maternal placenta or mother placenta. The fetal placenta is developed from the chorion, while the placenta, which is of mother, it is developed from the endocrine endocrine part. Okay, so. It's the intimate connection between the mother and uh, its uh, her fetus. Okay, so what are the functions that the placenta perform? The first function performed by the placenta is the providing nutrition. Nutrition. Provision of the nutrition. So the nutrients, as you know, the placenta is formed by rupturing. The chorion, which innervates into the endometrium and form the lacuna, okay, and form the lacunal system around it, and uh, this is because of it breaks the uh, arterioles as well as venules, which are coming from the mother side or from the uterus, right? And uh, it takes a uh, nutrients from the mother. Okay, before that, it is gaining the nutrient from the uterus. Okay, uterine milk provide a nutrients, but uh, when it uh, it is not sufficient when the embryo is get embedded into the endometrium during that the syncytial trophoblastic cells are forming or the chorionic villi which ruptures the blood vessel blood vessels of the endometrium and from right from that period the nutrients are taken from the placenta. Okay. So the um, from the placenta towards the fetus. So the provision of nutrition to the growing fetus is one of the function of the placenta. Then the second one, it is a means of gases exchange. Second one is the gases exchange. For the gases exchange, the another function of the placenta is the tra transport of oxygen as well as CO2. Okay, as you know, the fetus, the growing fetus, which is inside the womb of mother, requires high oxygen content, and that hemoglobin of that fetus um, takes maximum amount of oxygen for its growth. Okay, for its whatever the function performed by that fetus, it requires maximum blood, uh, maximum oxygen, and uh, that having uh, that. Hemoglobin absorb maximum oxygen from the mother's blood, right? Then uh, it is responsible for gases exchange, another function of the placenta, right? Then the next one is the, uh, the another function is the exchange of excretory material or removal of, removal of excretory material. Whatever the nitrogenous waste formed by the fetus, that is also removed by the means of this placenta only. Okay, then the another one is the nourishment. The baby get or the fetus get nourishment. Nourishment from the placenta. Okay, from the placenta. And uh, this placenta is also responsible for secretion of so many hormones secretion of hormones okay secretion of hormones there are different type of hormones secreted by the placenta uh, especially as you know uh, as the placenta get formed Placenta in early development. In first trimester, it secretes a progesterone. Progesterone. Okay. By uh, just, it stimulates the corpus luteum. Its placenta stimulates the corpus luteum. And so that the corpus luteum increases its secretion of the progesterone. Right? 
okay increases the secretion of progesterone then the next one is the estradiol as you know estradiol this estradiol is for the forming the estrogen is for the forming the estrogen that means ultimately this placenta is also responsible for secretion of estrogen hormone then the another one it is also responsible for secretion of relaxin this relaxin is secreted during parturition this relaxin is secreted by the placenta during parturition okay so during parturition this placenta also releases the prostaglandins as you know this prostaglandin is present it is one of the component of the yes semen okay but this prostaglandin is secreted by the placenta why it is respond it is required during the parturition because this prostaglandin as you know it initiate the contraction uterine contraction initial okay so that the sperm moves right you have studied in earlier in your, uh, previous videos you have studied that but in case of during parturition it is required to this prostaglandins uh, thinning the cervix okay it causes the thinning the thinning of cervix cervix by digesting some uh, fibers around around it okay so especially this prostaglandins is thinning the cervix and so that the cervix become more and more viscous during the parturition so this is very important role of the prostaglandin which is secreted by the placenta during parturition only okay so these are the hormones especially secreted by the uh, uh, placenta uh, as uh, when in the early stages it get developed as soon as it forms it stimulates the corpus luteum to form the progesterone and uh, as the progesterone level increases during first trimester as you know okay uh, which con which uh, uh, consume or continues the pregnancy and it is it is required to for the continuation of the pregnancy okay then the next one estradiol estradiol is also responsible uh, this is formed this is formed at the again it is also formed during the parturition period during the parturition the estrogen level get high in a mother's blood and that is because of this placenta and uh, this estro estrogen what the role of estrogen which is synthesized during the parturition so this especially this estrogen which is synthesized by the um, by the placenta especially by the estradiol okay it is it increases the uh, receptors of the uterus okay uh, especially the uterine receptors for the oxytocin the number of receptors get increased as you know oxytocin is a birth hormone and this birth hormone is released by the anterior by the pituitary of the female okay mother especially the posterior pituitary secretes the oxytocin by uh, the feedback given from the growing fetus a um, fully grown fetus gives a feedback to the posterior pituitary so that the posterior pituitary releases the oxytocin but that release of oxytocin must be received on the uterine wall and so that we need a excess amount of estrogen which is formed from the estradiol okay so this is the role so this estrogen increases the number of receptors for oxytocin on a uterine wall so that this oxytocin gets received on the uterine wall and this oxytocin then increases the uterine contraction and just initiate the labor labor okay so uh, and the parturition can happen so this is all related with the functions of placenta so interesting fact related with the placenta as you know this placenta provide nourishment to the fetus as well as it is responsible for secretion of so many hormones according to the stages and need hmm? further on in some vivi paris animals like uh, which are directly giving birth to the young ones like cat in uh, in cat you can see that 
Uh, as another function of the placenta, it is known to be an, uh, giving stimulation to the mammary gland also. Uh, okay, and increases the um, uh, milk secretion. Okay, increases the milk secretion, and so that some animals, some viviparous animals, are placentivorous. Some viviparous animals are placentivorous. That means placentivorous means what? They are eating their placenta. Okay, they are taking the placenta after birth of the fetus. What the after birth process? The third step of the parturition is the after birth. During this after birth, what happened? The placenta, which is stick to the endometrium, get detached from the endometrium and removed out. Okay, so some baby virus animals like cat, dog, hmm, uh, they directly eat carnivorous animals, major, majority. They eat that placenta. And uh, it is uh, seems to know that uh, it increases the lactation in them. Okay, whatever the need of protein is fulfilled by the placenta and so that these animals are consuming their own placenta, uh, which increases their milk secretion. Okay, so such animals are called as a placentivorous animals. Such animals are called as a placentivorous animals. Okay, so this is all related with the placenta. Now we are turning towards the next one is a pregnancy or gestation. So the next point from the topic is a very interesting fact. Now we are going to study. <clears throat> we are continuing the story of how the individual, new individual formed from the single cell. It's a mystery. Still now it's a mystery. Okay. So the pregnancy. Pregnancy is also called as a gestation. Okay. So related with the every species wise, the gestation period varies. Okay, so in case of human, the gestation period is of about uh, 260. Uh, Near about the days are gestation period is about 266 days. 266 days. Okay. And 266 days from fertilization. These are from fertilization. And if we consider LMP, last menstrual period hmm? so it's days are 280 days 280 days okay how 280 days hmm? so the fertilization okay happens fertilization days 266 days from fertilization so 260 days right and that remaining 14 days if we add then the day LNMP. Some are saying it as a LNMP. Last normal menstrual period. Okay. So that's a 280 days. Hmm? It is considered, if we consider it as a week wise, then it is of a 40 weeks. How many weeks? If we are dealing with a weeks, then it will be of a 40 weeks. Normally 40 weeks. But it can be plus minus 2. It can happen before or after, okay? Plus minus two weeks can be taken, uh, okay? So, related with the uh, pregnancy. Uh, this pregnancy especially is divided into three trimester. It is divided into three trimester. Okay, so what happens during these three trimesters? During the first one, three trimesters, the first trimester. This first trimester is especially up to the from fertilization to 12 weeks. Up to 12 weeks. 
the development up to 12 weeks. Okay. So what happens during first trimester? As you know, the scenario complete uh, as what happens in a, a fallopian tube towards the implantation, what happens, you know. Hmm? So it all comes from as the eggs uh, egg get fused with the sperm hmm, and mixing of amphimixis took place. Hmm? That is the uh, sharing of genetic material from maternal and paternal side, which results into the diploid zygote, to an zygote. This zygote is a unicellular embryo. Okay, so the it begins from, okay, the first trimester begins from the formation of the uh, unicellular embryo. That means it starts from the zygote formation. Okay, so it's a fertilization, right? Hmm. Uh, during that, afterwards, as you know, the uh, gastrulation further on happens. The this unicellular uh, embryo then turns into morula, morula to blastula. Hmm. Then implantation occurs. During implantation, simultaneously, the gastrulation happens. During gastrulation, the three germ layers get formed. At that phase only, the since idiotropoblast, which innovates the, uh, that all blastocyst into or get embedded, that, that blastocyst get embedded into the endometrium, okay, and get buried inside the endometrium and reaches up to the myometrium, okay, and then the formation of the placenta took place, right? All that we have studied. And further on, the formation of from the gastrulation, the three after the formation of three germ layers, the primitive streak get formed. Uh, the formation of primitive streak, which then convert into the formation of notochord. Primitive streak, then notochord. The formation of notochord is the characteristic feature of all the cortex. Of all the cortex, and all the cortex are cordates, cordates are follows a same basic plan of development. Okay, so as they form the first primitive streak get formed, and after that, on the sixth week, hmm, during this first trimester, on the sixth week, the nodal tissues get formed. And as the nodal tissues get formed, these nodal tissues, yes, nodal tissues start where we start the impulse generation. Okay, that means as the life get formed. As the life gate form, it requires circulation, right? To circulate the nutrients or all the content which is required for that growing mass must be circulated so that at the very first time, you can see that after the formation of notochord, the nerve nodal tissues get formed on the sixth week of the development, right? In the first prime minister. And that is noted. This beating is noted by doing a sonography. When we do a first, uh, during a, when the female is consumed, to confirm that consume or to confirm the pregnancy, doctor suggests her to do a sonography. During the sonography, they see the impulse, a growing black color mass. If the screen is black and white, then what happened? A growing mass which shows an impulse like this way. If two growing mass are there which are showing such a movement, then these are the twins. The sonologist says that these are the twins. Two growing masses are there. These are the twins. Okay, that can be identified. Okay, so the uh, nodal tissues, which is the just the beginning of the circulatory system, which get initiated. A uh, small limbs are also developed to that embryo. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm just showing the this is the uterus, suppose I'm showing this, and uh, here is the here is the this the placenta get developed or formed. This is the placenta, and to this placenta, placenta get formed, and from this placenta. A cord arises and to this cord 
the fetus is growing. Okay. This cord is attached. Hmm? So first of all, the during very first time, what happens? The primitive stick get formed. Okay, like this way. Further on, the cephalic region, the head region grows. All this assembly is in a amnion and chorion. The exact outermost covering is the chorion, then the amnion, right? And surround it to surround to it. It is a just a second. ये ब्लू कलर का रहेगा वो कोरियन रहेगा उसके अंदर येलो वाला जो रहेगा वो योग सैक रहेगा एंड योग सैक में एम्नियोटिक फ्लूड सॉरी सॉरी दिस विल बी द एम्नियन दिस इज द कोरियन हियर इज द एम्नियोटिक कैविटी ओके योग सैक तो बहुत इट्स रोल इज नॉट सो मच नो नॉट सिग्निफिकेंट रोल परफॉर्म बाय द योग सैक एंड इट इज सेड टू बी ओनली द फॉर्मेशन of the rbc synthesis of rbc so suppose so yahan pe ye sara this will be the chorion this blue color is the chorion and this chorion and this chorionic villus this chorionic villus is embedded into the uterus okay ye sara assembly yahan pe rahega So like this way. So during first prime minister, what happened? The primitive stick get formed, and here is the development of the nodal tissues happens. Okay, then the primitive stick two, as well as notochord, then the uh, circular part of circulatory system get formed. Then afterwards, small limbs get developed. small limbs get developed limb development took place hmm? this especially took place in a first trimester and afterwards what and these limbs are folded one during first trimester after as it turns into the second trimester the sec second trimester is a period from 13th to 26th week Okay, so what are the development happens during this? So you can see during first trimester, what happens? The formation of primitive stick, formation of notochord, formation of nodal tissues, cephalic region, limb formation. Small limbs get developed during first trimester. So during second trimester, what happened? Uh, listen, huh? during whatever the changes happens during the first trimester. Okay, inside the womb of mother, which ultimately shows a uh, changes in a mother also. Okay, so what are the changes occurs in a mother? As you know, the placenta get formed. Okay, this placenta, as soon as the placenta gets formed, it stimulates this corpus luteum. Okay, and this corpus luteum is then increasing the secretion of progesterone. Okay. Hmm. And placenta also then starts the secretion of progesterone, so that in a mother's blood, hmm, and along with progesterone, this placenta is also responsible for secretion of SCG, as I have stated, human chorionic gonad dropping hormone. As this SCG and progesterone gets synthesized during first trimester, hmm, it initiates the uh, in a female it shows a morning sickness. Hmm? Uh, some females when that female conceived uh, during her first trimester uh, she shows some uh, morning sickness signs of pregnancy okay uh, in which nausea occurs to that female vomiting also happens okay and uh, mood swing okay these are so normal things and that happens because of why such happens why the morning sickness is seen majority of the ladies because of the increased level of progesterone this happens because of increased level of progesterone and because of this morning sickness the lady generally refuses to eat majority the female refuses to eat okay 
uh, as a, during this first trimester. Okay. Uh, then during second trimester, as we are moving towards the as the pregnancy continues, and uh, on the thirteenth week to twenty sixth week is the period of the second trimester. So in the second trimester, what happens? SCG levels uh, especially get declines. Uh, the hormone level gets stabilized. The hormone level gets stabilized and SCG level get declines. Okay, so what happens during that? Hmm? And uh, the placenta completely get developed and take place of the and uh, responsible for the secretion of progesterone now. Okay, placenta get fully developed during second trimester and uh, uh, starts to secrete some secretes of progesterone and uh, the corpus luteum get regress during this second trimester and now the hormones level are at steady position and get stable so majority those ladies who initiates the morning sickness uh, during first trimester majorly it gets slow down or um, in majority of women it is not seen after uh, during this second trimester and if in some female it continue it may continue up to the ninth month also in some female it runs up to the seven uh, up to third trimester hmm? just beginning or at the end of second trimester it will stop or rather it continue throughout the pregnancy okay that happens in uh, every listen every time Every consume every time the features shown shown by the female are different types. Or the majority होता क्या है कि जो mother रहती है वो हर time अगर वो first first pregnancy में अगर उसको omitting का feature दिखा तो second time में वो नहीं दिखेगा. हम्म sometimes okay sometimes it will continue okay. So, uh, whatever the nausea, second time she will develop a nausea. That happens. Every uh, pregnancy is different, and every during every pregnancy, uh, the features shown by the female are also different. Okay. So, then the next one, uh, baby's movement can uh, can be happens in a second trimester, and uh, these are very slow movements during first uh, second trimester. Okay, uh, especially the limbs which are folded, which get straightened during the second trimester. Okay, limbs get straightened during the second trimester, and this second trimester, especially uh, size of the baby get enlarged. Size of the baby get enlarged, and all the organs and all the systems get developed, get formed, and start to develop. Okay, not fully develop. They start to develop during the second trimester. Okay, at the same time during second trimester, the mother, her lower abdominal region, the size of the her um, uterus, the uterus get enlarged. Okay, the small size uterus, it uh, gets straightened up to thirty centimeters. Okay, during a pregnancy period, it get enlarged. And as the baby size increases, the size of the fetus get increased. The position also get changed. The head position of the fetus also get changed. Okay, so the size of the fetus get increased. The limb get formed. The organ systems get developed and formed. Okay, it having a small caudal region at the starting one. Okay, as the days in, in progresses, it get. Uh, it removed out, but okay. So the head position change as the day progresses, and further on uh, during second trimester, uh, the breast of the female also get developed properly. The prolactin gets synthesized, synthesized, okay, and it starts to secrete. Or synthesize, sorry, not the secretion, uh, synthesis of the milk in the mammary gland of the uh, mother. 
okay it initiates so the size of the breast in case of uh, in case of pregnant lady also increased because the fat, because of the fat deposition okay adipose tissues get deposited at any site uh, so majority of the uh, pregnant ladies weight get increased uh, near about 10 to 12 kilos by 12 10 to 12 kilograms it get increased hmm? as the uh, womb size the weight of uterus also get increased weight of uterus also get increased the amniotic fluid the content of amniotic fluid as the pregnancy goes on it also get increased near about 2 liters 1.5 to 2 liters of the amniotic fluid is there hmm? then the placenta then the extra embryonic me membrane like chorion okay uh, uh, all that material it's weight near about uh, 5 to 7 kg 5 to 7 kg in her lower abdominal cavity she is uh, con consuming or carrying okay during a pregnancy period right okay then during third trimester what happens this head this head comes at downward position okay this head comes at downward position that means towards the cervix region towards the cervix region okay as this umbilical cord okay it is too long one okay but the chorion the amniotic fluid and the placenta as well as the growing fetus near about as you know the baby born uh, uh, its weight, we are asking about the weight of the uh, delivered baby. Hmm? Its weight is about uh, near about two to two and a half kg or up to three kg. Uh, some uh, fetus which are fully grown or uh, generally they're having three or three and a half kg also. Okay, so if the fetus is of uh, two and a half kg, then the remaining material is also of same or having uh, some extinct more than the growing fetus okay near about six to seven five to seven kg weight increases which includes which includes the weight of the fetus placental weight amniotic fluid and the chorion right so during the first trimester as the female consume here is the internal loss and external loss at the cervix region, as you know, and it gets blocked by the mucus plaque. So here is the mucus plaque. Mucus plaque. As the female consume and the fetus start to grow, here is the formation of mucus plaque, which closes the cervix, which closes the cervix. Cervix is a very small opening, very small opening, right? Um, but during parturition, it get dilated near about 10 to 12 centimeters. Okay. So, during third trimester, the baby get fully grown. This fully grown baby's head goes near to the cervix region. It goes to near to the cervix region. Then, the fully grown uh, uh, limbs, head, neck, eye with the eyelids, here on a skin, okay, uh, it get formed here on uh, uh, here on a head, okay, skin. All these get formed, okay, and the baby is now fully grown and uh, having one protective shiny covering around uh, that fetus, growing fetus. Now that baby is ready to come out, okay. As its needs are not fulfilled, uh, or uh, now it requires, when the baby is fully grown, it start urinates. Whatever the urine and uh, all the fecal matter which is uh, formed and eliminated out by that fetus may comes into the amnion, amniotic fluid. May comes into the amniotic fluid. So, tap to baby bahar nikalna hai nikalna hai. Usko nikalna hai. So now, after third trimester, as we are considering uh, these uh, as weak ways, if we considered it as a weak wise, then it it is it takes near about forty weeks for full growth. 
Okay, forty weeks for the full growth. Plus minus two. Plus minus two. होता है उसमें. तो uh, as the date of accepted date of delivery is uh, explain, is given by the sonologist or the gynecologist. It is given. But sometimes the baby born before the that day or that date or after that date. That happens, uh, okay. That happens, and that is normal one. But if it takes too much time to born after that uh, accepted date of uh, delivery (EDD), okay, then it must be removed surgically by doing a C-section. That means cesarean. Okay. So now we are turning towards the next point from this topic is the parturition. So the next point from this topic is a parturition. Parturition, or it is also called as delivery. Okay, parturition or delivery. As after completion of parturition. As completion of the uh, three prime minister, after completion of three prime minister, the fully grown fetus, especially the signal is given by the fully grown fetus, not by the mother. The signals are given by the fetus. So, what happens during parturition? During parturition, especially. At the uh, it takes place in three stages. The parturition takes place in three stages. The first one is the dilation, dilation of cervix, dilation of cervix. Then the second one is expulsion, expulsion. So parturition is totally a neuroendocrine control. Neuroendocrine. It totally neuroendocrine. Parturition is totally a neuroendocrine. So what happens? This grown fetus, hmm? especially the fully grown fetus. And the placenta causes mild uterine contraction. Okay, and the placenta forms the mild uterine contraction, especially during this. The estrogen estrogen level also increases, and uh, which increases the oxytocin receptor on the uterine wall, as I have stated earlier. Hmm. So, especially what happens, uh, it initiated by the labor, labor initiation. Uh, so, there are two types of labor, false and true labor. False labor are just, these are initiated, or the, initiated, that means a spasm occurs in a uterine wall, and uh, it is for a short duration, and then it gets disappeared. Hmm. But the true wave is a, a true labor when it initiate okay it's a wing it is in a wave form it comes and then slow down and again comes okay the wave starts continuously uh, in case of true labor okay so what happened during parturition at very first time the first step is the dilation of cervix as you know dial the cervix this here is the cervix the cervix is a very small. The cervix is a very small, uh, small opening. But during parturition, during normal delivery, what happens? This cervix get dilated. The cervix get dilated up to, up to ten to twelve centimeters. 
10 to 12 centimeters for uh, expulsion of the baby or uh, the so that the baby can come out easily. Mm -hmm. So what happened the, during this, especially the grown fetus, it having a placenta. This is a placenta, right? This placenta secretes a prostaglandin. Prostaglandins. As I have stated earlier, the prostaglandin which digests this, the lining. Okay, so that the mucus clogs get dissolved. So that the mucus clog get dissolved. And this mucus clog, when it get dissolved, it forms a lining around the vagina. As the cervix get dilated, the cervix get dilated. As the cervix get dilated, the vagina also get dilated. You can see. Yeah. As the cervix get dilated, the vagina also gets dilated. And the this cervix, uh, this vaginal region of that lady hmm, who initiate labor, okay, her vagina becomes too much mucusy. Too much mucusy. So uh, this mucus is to avoid a friction. It is especially to avoid a friction and for easy parturition, this all happens. And that is by the placenta. All the uh, all the effects are taken by the fetus uh, and especially related with the labor or the delivery, uh, this is. Okay. So, especially during this, what happened, the label initiate, the label, uh, whatever the label initiate in a mother, that is very, very painful process. That is a very, very painful process. As we are saying that, one saying is that the birth of a baby is the second birth of a mother. Okay, because it is too painful. It is too painful process. Now this fully grown fetus is coming out. Okay. Uh, so during dilation of cervix, what happened? Okay. It is totally comes under neuroendocrine control. So uh, especially during this, what happened? The oxytocin is released by the posterior pituitary of the mother. Okay. And, uh, so hormones are, especially the growing fetus, give signal for the uterine contraction by secreting ACTH from the pituitary of itself and corticosteroids from the adrenal gland. So listen, ACTH and corticosteroids. Steroids. Okay. So ACTH is secreted by the pituitary pituitary gland, who the fetus, this is of a fetus pituitary. Corticosteroids are secreted by adrenal cortex, adrenal cortex, adrenal cortex. This is again of the fetus. So clear, hmm? these efforts are taken by the fetus. Hmm? So firstly, what happened? The Fully grown fetus, the, now the fetus is fully grown. The stimulus goes to its pituitary. Its pituitary starts to secrete acetage. And the adrenal cortex, which is present on the adrenal gland, which secretes the adrenal, uh, especially the adrenal cortex secretes the corticosteroids. So what happens? This acetage and the corticosteroids get secreted by the uh, fetus. This both these ACTH and corticosteroids, hmm, which are secreted by the fetus, gives positive feedback to the pituitary of the mother. See, it gives a positive feedback to the pituitary of the mother. So, in a result, okay, in a result, this pituitary secretes what 
It secretes oxytocin. Here I am showing. Here. So what happens? Okay. Which gives positive feedback to the mother's pituitary. Okay. So mother's posterior pituitary gets stimulated, and in a result, the mother's pituitary secretes oxytocin. What is secreted? Oxytocin. At the same time, at the same time. As the prostaglandins are secreted by the progesterone, uh, sorry, placenta, the placenta of the fetus, again the fetus placenta, is secreted estradiol. Estradiol. Okay, this estradiol converts into estrogen. Convert into estrogen. As this estrogen gets formed, so what happened? So at the uh, last month of the gestation period, that means at the uh, when the female completes her gestation period, during that the estrogen level get high to its peak. Why this happens? Because of the estradiol which is synthesized by the placenta get converted into the estrogen, and the level of estrogen get increased. This increased level of estrogen increases. What it increases? It increases the receptors which are present on a uterus. Increases a receptors for uterus. These receptors are receiving. They are receiving. Yes, they are receiving oxytocin. So, what is the role of this estrogen? This estrogen, which is synthesized by the placenta, is responsible for increase the receptor, uterine receptor for oxytocin. So the oxytocin, which is synthesized by the mother pituitary, okay, which gets received on a uterine ball, and as you know, this oxytocin is named as a easy birth hormone. It is named as a easy birth. Hormone which works on myometrium and endometrium, especially it works on a myometrium. It works on a myometrium, okay. Just below to the endometrium, there is a myometrium, okay, which is made up of a muscles, okay, a muscular layer, and a uterine contraction begins, and a uterine. Contraction begins. So beginning of uterine contraction is comes under the oxytocin. Clear everyone? So this oxytocin increases the uterine contraction. As the uterine contraction happens, which exerts a pressure from all the side on this. And the fetus is trying to move towards the cervix. The fetus is also exerting pressure on a cervix. It is also exerting pressure on a cervix. It is trying to come out from the cervix, right? So during this, the what happened? During this, the cervix get dilated. Okay, during this process, the cervix get dilated. The internal and external os get open. As the female starts and the female initiate, as the contraction of the endometrium happens, the labor initiate in that female. That labor pains means nothing but the contraction of uterine wall. Okay. And this, uh, these contraction are in a wave form. Okay. So it dilates the cervix. And the inner lining of the vagina become too much mucusy and slippery. Okay. And the near about 10 centimeter wide, the cervix as well as vagina get widens. Okay, and then what happened? The second stage, expulsion. As the pressure increases, as the amount of oxytocin increases more and more, it exerts a pressure or increases the contraction of uterine wall, which exerts a pressure on the 
Yes, this is the amnion. This is the amnion. Okay, during this, what happened? During this, the mucus and the blood clots starts to come out. Okay, what happens during this? The mucus and the some blood clots starts to come out. Clear? That means it starts to bleed. It starts to bleed. At the same time, hmm, the now a pressure is exerted by the uterine wall on the amnion now. Okay. This amnion get ruptured. This amnion get ruptured and this amnion starts to bleed now. Amnion starts to bleed. Okay. As the amnion, amnion is a watery fluid, right? Which provide nourishment to the fetus, embryo. Okay. It get burst. If it is not get burst, it can be by uh, touching it, it is bursted by the gynecologist. Okay. So it get burst. It get burst. Now, the the amniotic fluid comes out along with what ever the thick endometrium which also start to bleed during the labor. And when that female takes a big push, okay, or pressure, exerts a pressure, then what happens? The baby is also trying to come out, right? The baby is also trying to come out. Okay, when the pain happens, the labor pain initiate, this is the cervix. If this is the cervix, then what happened? As the pain initiate and the baby also try to propel or push it, the baby's head. We can see the baby's head and also the hair on its head from outside, from the vagina. Okay, it can be seen. Hmm? As the labor goes, goes back, the baby's head also goes back. Then again, the baby also tries to come out and the labor initiate at that time, a full push is given by the baby and by the mother, by the uterine wall, especially by the uterine wall, forcefully the baby is coming out from the cervix. As the baby's head come out, the doctor takes the head and turns it and then keep, keep, uh, take out the baby from the Vagina. Take out the baby from the vagina. Okay. As the baby come out, okay, along with the long umbilical cord also come out. As the baby come out, the long umbilical cord also come out. Here is the umbilical cord. It's too long. Or sometimes it gets coiled around the neck region of the fetus. Then doctor suggests that. Don't wait. If it gets tied then it will cause a death of the fetus in the womb itself. So for that, doctor suggests us a caesarean. Okay. <clears throat> so during this, the, the expulsion happens. This is the second step. Expulsion happens. Then when the baby come out, then what is remain inside? What is remain inside? This umbilical cord and the placenta is remaining. Okay. So next after baby come out within an uh, 20 to 30 minutes the afterbirth stage comes out what happened during afterbirth uh, uh, it takes near about 25 to 30 minutes to come out the uh, placenta this placenta get detached from this region okay uh, during afterbirth what happened the placenta comes out uh, get detached from the endometrium and the umbilical cord also comes out, okay? And this is the afterbirth process. So in the afterbirth, the remaining, whatever the remains in the endometrium, that is along with the placenta, the umbilical cord, and the thickening of the endometrium, which bleeds out, that is the afterbirth. And uh, the bleeding also continues up to uh, max day, near about four to five days, heavy flow, and afterwards, uh, it slow downs. Hmm? Okay, thank you.